first, um, uh, we will hear from Hui Jing Xu uh, from the University of Southern California. And Hui Jing is going to share with us today uh, a talk titled Chronic Recording from Multiple Hippocampal Subregions in Free Moving Rats with a Flexible Paraline Based Multi Electrodes Array. That's a mouthful. And um, I will also say, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask questions, and then we will read those out in the Q&A period at the end of the talk. So uh, whenever you are ready, Hu Jing, take it away. Yeah. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Hui Jing, uh, Hui Jing Xu. Uh, today I would like to talk about the uh, chronic recording uh, from multiple hippocampal subregions uh, with a flexible paralleling based multi electrode array from free moving rats. So uh, first, uh, I would like to give a brief <coughs> uh, background and motivation, uh, uh, talk uh, briefly about the background and motivation behind this project. And then I will talk about uh, how we design and inserted this flexible parallel MEA. And, and I will also talk about the in vivo recordings obtained with the parallel array from both uh, acute experiment and chronic experiment. So uh, first, the, uh, the hippocampus is a, is a crucial subcortical structure that is closely related to the uh, formation of new long-term memories and declarative memories. So our uh, ability to remember what happened, when and where did this happen, are highly dependent on the uh, proper function of the hippocampus. So uh, anatomically, uh, the hippocampus is consisted of three uh, uh, subregions, uh, so three major subregions, uh, which is the, the dentigerous, uh, the CA3, and the CA1. So uh, projections from the anterior cortex to the dentigerous, and then from the dentigerous to CA3, from CA3 to the CA1, form a trisynaptic circuit, which is essential to, uh, for the processing of memory uh, memory information. Uh, so clearly. Uh, collect stable long-term recordings from uh, populations of hippocampal neurons from behaving animal is the foundation to uh, understand, the, uh, understand the mechanism behind uh, memory formation. And it's also uh, essential to investigate the function of the hippocampus. So an um, electrode that, uh, in recording, a, elect a recording electrode that can uh, collect uh, stable uh, neural activities from all three subregions of the, uh, the hippocampus over a long period uh, is needed. And also such device is uh, also a key element for the uh, development of hippocampal prosthesis. Uh, however, long-term recording, stable long-term recording is challenging since once the uh, electrode is implanted, immune response will be activated. And over time, it will try to isolate the electrodes from surrounding brain tissues. Uh, Paralene, which is a flexible polymer. So several features of the paralene make it a very good candidate to be, uh, to be used as the uh, supporting material for uh, implantable multi-electrode arrays. So first, paralene is very flexible. So compared to other rigid, uh, uh, rigid materials such as metal or silicon, it can greatly reduce the uh, stiffness uh, mismatch between the uh, implant and brain tissue. Uh, in addition, uh, it, has, it, it has very high bio compatibility. It is uh, one of the um, materials that within the highest USP class classifications. Uh, and also uh, paraline has been widely used as insulation and coating materials for medical devices for a very long, uh, for, for a very long time. Uh, in addition, uh, the fabrication of paraline is, is compatible with uh, uh, standard nano, nano fabrication procedures. So this is uh, this means uh, almost electrodes uh, with almost arbitrary uh, layout can be fabricated with high accuracy. Accuracy. This main feature is uh, is uh, especially beneficial for brain structures such as the hippocampus. Uh, from the histology, we can see that all hippocampal neurons are packed into those very thin cell body layers and curved into a very complex double C shape. So uh, two recording uh, from multiple cell body layers, uh, electrodes need to be processedly arranged along the uh, recording shank uh, to conform to the uh, curvature of the hippocampus. So to determine the uh, layout of the 
parallel multi-electrode array, we first took a measurement of the uh, depth difference between the CA1 and CA3 cell body layer uh, from the brain atlas. So uh, from that brain atlas, uh, at different anterior to polar difference between the CA3 and CA1 layer. Besides the uh, brain atlas, uh, we also uh, we also measured this uh, distance between the CA1 and CA3 region from uh, brain slices collected at different anterior to posterior locations. Uh, again, from those uh, uh, evaluation, we can see that this this depth difference varied from location to location. Uh, on average, they're around 1.1 to 1.2 millimeter. Uh, the C3 region is about this 1.1 to 1.2 millimeter deep, deeper than the CA1 region. In addition to those measurements, uh, neural activity itself, it can actually uh, provide a very valuable insight into the anatomical structures of the brain region of interest. Like the hippocampus, uh, when we use the uh, standard uh, 16 channel microwire electrode arrays, when we implant those uh, microwire arrays into the hippocampus, we can monitor the signal. And while the array is within the um, cortical region, uh, most neural activity we see uh, are actually single spikes. Once those microwires uh, advance into the CA1 region, uh, these uh, complex spikes, which is a group of action, action potentials fire with a uh, very uh, less than five millisecond interspike intervals start to show up. This kind of uh, 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 firing pattern is the uh, character characteristic firing pattern of uh, hippocampal pyramidal cells. As the uh, microwire is further advanced into the CA3 region, uh, complex spikes uh, generated from CA3 pyramidal cells uh, start can be recorded. So by looking at the at depth where those complex spikes were recorded, we can actually get an estimation about uh, the depth difference between the CA1 and CA3 cell body layers. So combine all the measure, measurement from brain atlas, uh, brain slices, and also the estimation from the neural activity, we designed this um, um, conformal uh, multi parallel based multi-electrode array that target at both the CA1 and CA3 cell body layers. The array is, consists of eight parallel shanks with 250 micrometer spacing in between. So in total, the, uh, the parallel MEA can spine about two millimeter uh, anterior to posterior uh, range of the dorsal hippocampus. Uh, on each shank, on each individual shank, there are two recording groups with four recording electrodes within each recording group. Uh, the recording electrodes is 30 micrometer in, in diameter and the spacing between electrodes is 40 micrometer uh, in between. So with this kind of design, uh, we can make sure each recording group can cover the can can cover the the, the cell body layer, and also uh, because the uh, each recording group is uh, several hundred micrometer thick. So uh, this kind of design can give us an opportunity to compensate variations caused by animal and uh, different implantation locations. Uh, on each shank, the location of those two recording group is uh, specially adjusted according to the previous measurement as an estimation to make sure those uh, electrodes uh, conform to the curvature of the hippocampus. So to implant, it, uh, to implant this uh, flexible parallel array, uh, we used a uh, dissolvable pack brace to uh, support, to support the, uh, to provide support for the exposed parallel tip and also attach this parallel flexible parallel array to a uh, acute backing. So during the uh, insertion, first the exposed tip is inserted into the brain tissue. Uh, before, before insertion, we remove the dura and the blood vessel to make sure the uh, soft tip can be inserted into the uh, brain tissue. And then once the tip is inserted, a small drop of saline is added to gradually dissolve the pack brace. Once the pack brace is partially dissolved, uh, part of the parallel array can be exposed. And uh, with the supporting from the remaining pack brace and the acrylic backing, uh, the parallel array can be further uh, inserted. So after the parallel array being inserted into the desired depth, 
uh, saline can be added to wash away the entire, entire pack brace. Uh, this way, the, the flexible paraline array can be released from the acrylic backing. Uh, with such method, uh, this flexible array can be implanted into the hippocampus without using uh, shuttle devices or coating to the paraline array. Uh, here is a um, horizontal brain slices collected at a depth about 3.8 millimeters. Uh, we can see the uh, traces caused by those uh, parallel shanks. So, um, uh, so during the implantation and immediately after the uh, implantation, neural activity was monitored and also recorded. Here is one example showing the uh, neural activity recorded with the uh, eight shank parallel array from one animal. So we can see that all eight shanks recorded neural activities from the, uh, from the brain region. And uh, within five of those, uh, out of eight shanks, we can see that the neural activity actually recorded from both recording groups. Uh, if we take a close look uh, on one shank, we can see that complex spikes recorded from both the uh, top and bottom group, which indicates that our uh, electrodes actually recorded from both the CA1 and the CA3 uh, region simultaneously. So uh, besides those acute experiments, we also let the animal recover and uh, recorded neural activity and animal's behavior while the animal is running freely in an open field. So here is the uh, multiple unit recorded from both the CA1 and the CA3 region from one animal. So in total, we have implanted uh, 11 animals and for eight of them, we collected chronic data uh, over a period uh, ranging from five to almost a year. So uh, 91 units were recorded from those eight animals with uh, 67 units from the CA3 region and 24 from the CA1 region and multiple uh, units were recorded from the uh, both regions uh, of five animals implant, implanted with, uh, chronically implanted with the uh, paralene array. So uh, we also took a look at the uh, signal quality over time. So we first took a look at the uh, noise level over time. For all eight animals, we can see that uh, the noise level is stable for at least uh, over the 10 weeks post implantation. Uh, besides those noise level, we also took a look at the uh, average spike amplitude or just the spike amplitude. So the spike amplitude var varied a little bit. For one animal, we see that the amplitude increased first and then gradually decreased. Uh, for other two animals, we see the, uh, the amplitude is decreasing. But for the rest three animals, we can see that uh, the amplitude is pretty stable for the, uh, over the period of 5 to 12 weeks. So for one, one particular animal we actually recorded for neural activity can actually can be recorded for over almost a year. Uh, so from this plot, we can see that the, uh, the noise level is pretty, sta uh, pretty stable for, for the entire uh, period of time. Uh, for the amplitude, it changed, but still um, it's around 100 microvolts. So it's still uh, uh, considered to be good signals can, uh, with good signal to noise ratios. Uh, at day 362 post implantation, we can still record very high amplitude spikes. Uh, and we can also uh, see those clear complex spikes recorded from this animal. Uh, so uh, like I mentioned, we also uh, recorded the animal's moving trace while the animal is moving freely in this open field. So uh, those place, those locations specified firing property, uh, which is the very famous firing property of hippocampal neurons, those play cells uh, can be recorded from the uh, from those uh, from these animals. And we also we observe those place fields from both the CA1 and CA3 regions. So uh, after all recordings collected, we also uh, sacrificed the animal and did some uh, immunohistochemical uh, stinging to evaluate the uh, immune response to this implantation. So uh, we collected tissue from the animal being implanted for six months and uh, stained those uh, 50 micrometer brain slices with GFAT first. Uh, so we calculate the uh, activation of astrocyte. Okay, okay. Uh, the astrocyte at about 75 uh, micrometers away from the uh, from implanted site and. Uh, uh, 
by comparing the uh, concentration of, of astrocyte, we can see that the uh, astrocyte concentration went back to control level at about 75 mic micrometer away from the uh, implanted site. Uh, similarly, as, uh, as the GFAP, we also seen with new end to see uh, how the neuron uh, react to the uh, to the, uh, to the implanted MEA. So uh, we can see that the, the, at, although at the implanted site, the new, neuron uh, concentration reduced, but the concentration of the neuron go back to, went back to control level at about 150 micrometer from the implantation site. So as a summary, uh, we have developed this uh, flexible multiple electrode arrays, which conform to the anatomy of red hippocampus. And we show that uh, simultaneously recording from multiple subregions with this uh, multi-electrode uh, multi array is, uh, is durable and we also collect the stable long-term recordings from several animals. So uh, such method is not just limited to the hippocampus. Uh, with special designs, we can actually have polymer arrays that targeting at both the cortical and subcortical regions. And in addition, we are also evaluate, uh, try to exploring the uh, ability to, uh, in, uh, to add stimulation functions into, uh, into those devices and to evaluate how this device can deliver current to the surrounding tissue. So together, uh, we are one more step cl closer to have the, to develop uh, devices for the uh, hippocampal prosthesis. So uh, yeah, at last, I just want to uh, thanks our funding agency, NSF, uh, NIH Brain and U24, especially this uh, NIH U24, uh, grant that gave us this opportunity to form this polymer implantable electrodes foundry. And uh, this foundry uh, actually gave us the opportunity to promote the polymer electrodes to uh, all the uh, neuroscience researchers. So if you're interested in polymer array, uh, you want to design polymer electrodes, you can always contact us and all those um, all the services is funded by the U24 grant. Uh, so that's all, that's all for, the, for my talk and uh, I'm willing to take uh, questions. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and in lieu of, of applause, because we can